the sentencing guidelines have been in effect in the federal system forever. I mean, we have the federal sentencing guidelines, and that's what's basically used to calculate a sentence. In the federal system, and a lot of state court systems as well, there's two phases to a trial. You have the merits phase where you have your trial, whether you determine whether you're guilty or innocent. And if you're found guilty of any offenses, then you're bound over for a sentencing hearing. And in every other jurisdiction except for the military, those hearings are set often as weeks or months later. Uh, I, mean, I mean, look at the current Trump case that's in the news. He was convicted in New York. We won't talk about that case in particular, the merits of it. But that case now, there's going to be sentencing months later. And in the interim, they which was called a PSI, which is a preliminary sentencing investigation, where a paroling authority does a whole background on you. And based on the PSI, you get a score based on your criminal history, your background, and then each offense has a certain category as well. And it's basically a chart that the federal system uses based on your score versus the offensive score. And then think of it like a chart, you know, X and Y, and you match it up. And that's going to be your sentencing guidelines, which the judge is required to sentence you to those guidelines, unless there's what's called a downward departure, which you can do in a motion. And what that means is that the judges have very little discretion in the case. So let's say you're in uh, the federal system or the state court system, you get convicted of a crime. There very well be, may be mandatory minimums involved in sentencing guidelines, where maybe a judge thinks there's a lot of mitigation and extenuation, but the military, but the federal judge or the state court judge is required to sentence you to a minimum of 10 years and a maximum of 20 years. And the judge has discretion within that those guidelines, but there's a minimum and a maximum he has to sentence you to. Well, the military has never had that in the entire history of the UCMJ. The military has just had a maximum punishment. And, you know, the judge or the jury, depending on which one you choose, can are free to come up with whatever sentence they want to. And so let's say, for example, you get convicted of a sexual assault. That sexual assault may carry a 20-year maximum. But the reality is you're not going to get a 20-year maximum. It's highly, highly unlikely. We're seeing We were seeing cases where... People would have sexual assault. There'd be a sexual assault. Maybe in you have all these factors and extenuation and mitigation. And panels were giving minimal confinement time: ten months, twelve months, eighteen months for sexual assault cases. I've even had cases where you have very serious convictions, but there was no confinement. The last case we had in Japan, there was one a minor conviction, and it was very minimal you know, sentence that he received. So that's all changed, and what's happened is. This year in particular, the military has enacted through Congress sentencing guidelines. So it is the first time in the history of the UCMJ that there are guidelines for each offense that the judge is required to follow. If you're under investigation for or have been accused of a crime that occurred in 2024 or after, you are facing harsh punishments under the mandatory sentencing guidelines. Please reach out to us so we can explain these guidelines to you and how to actually win your case and not end up in prison. You can reach us at 813-669-3500 or book a consultation with me on our website at www.beleckylawgroup.com.